All right, let's talk about Shigella and Salmonella. Let's go into this restaurant, the Shigella and Salmonella restaurant, to learn about Shigella and Salmonella. We begin by first noting that on the door it says, gram negative rods only, and that's because Shigella and Salmonella are both gram negative rods. Well, they're gram negative, and that's why they stain red in gram staining, due to their thin peptidoglycan wall. And as we can see, they are rods. Shigella is on this side of the room, and Salmonella is on this side of the room, and we divide them into the non-typhoidal and typhoidal types, and we'll talk about them. So before we talk about the differences between Shigella and Salmonella, let's talk about similarities. Again, besides the fact that they're gram-negative rods. Let's take a look at these two signs that they have on the wall of the restaurant. This one says no oxen. Apparently they have an ox issue in this restaurant, that oxen break into it. So there's a sign that says no oxen, and this reminds us that Shigella and Salmonella, as opposed to other gram-negative pathogens, are oxidase negative. No oxen. And this sign says that no dairy, no milk, is allowed in the restaurant, which reminds us that Shigella and Salmonella are both non-lactose fermenting pathogens. This differentiates them from other gram-negative pathogens, which do ferment lactose, all right? So again, Shigella and Salmonella are both oxidase negative and are both non-lactose fermenting pathogens. In the sign underneath these, we take a look at the restaurant special, the pie patches. I guess they're called pie patches because they look like pies and have patches on them. Mmm. Well, the mmm reminds us of the M cells and the pie patches of the pyre patches. The M cells which overlie the pyre patches are involved in the pathogenesis of Shigella and Salmonella, as they both, especially Shigella, are involved in invading the pyre patches, the M cells of the pyre patches of the GI system. Now, a few more points. You may have noticed that while Shigella does not have flagella, Salmonella does. And that's because Salmonella is motile while Shigella is not. That's why Salmonella needs these flagella. Additionally, you may have noticed, and this might gross you out, that under Shigella, there is this puddle of blood, and that's because Shigella has bloody diarrhea. Acute onset bloody diarrhea, along with fever and abdominal pain, are characteristic mostly of Shigella, along with E. coli and Campylobacter. Now, Salmonella may have bloody diarrhea, but it's usually a watery diarrhea if there is any diarrhea at all, but we really want to think about Shigella if we see acute onset bloody diarrhea, especially in children. And the last thing I'm going to say, before I get into the individual pathogens over here, is that there is this sign over here by Salmonella, and the high sign there is this sign over here that's high up. The high sign reminds me of that Salmonella is hydrogen sulfide producing as opposed to Shigella, which is not hydrogen sulfide producing. And we use this sometimes to differentiate them, Shigella and Salmonella. All right, now let's talk about Shigella specifically. So this girl over here, again, has bloody diarrhea. She also has fever and abdominal pain and specifically a left-sided abdominal pain. And that's because Shigella tends to involve the rectosigmoid colon, which is on the left side. As for her drink over here, well, it's a little bit dirty. And that's because Shigella transmission is primarily through contaminated water or contaminated food. In fact, she actually has poop in her cup because Shigella has a fecal oral transmission through contaminated food and water. And do you want to know what this girl in this restaurant is eating? This jello. That's why she's the she jello. This creature over here, this girl over here is eating she jello, she jello for Shigella. And that's how we know that this side of the scene is about Shigella. The eye by Shigella reminds us of invasion and inactivation, but invasion more than inactivation. That Shigella pathogenesis involves invasion of the mucosa of the GI system. And that's more than inactivation. You see Shigella, some types, specifically dysentery, has a sugar toxin which inactivates 60S protein subunit of the ribosomes, which prevents protein synthesis. But this is only specific to some forms of Shigella. All forms of Shigella, however, invade the mucosa, and that's the pathogenesis. And that's why we've highlighted the fact that invasion is more than inactivation, that for Shigella, the main form of pathogenesis is invasion of the intestinal mucosa. Now let's move on to Salmonella. And we remember that this side of the table is about typhoid, the typhoid type, because this pathogen is typing on the computer. So here we have these two salmon creatures over here eating at the restaurant. We take a look at the typhoidal type as this capsule, the virulence factor, the capsular antigen that inhibits neutrophil recruitment and phagocytosis, which limits the acute inflammatory response. Rather, the cell undergoes unchecked intraphagocytic replication, resulting in typhoid fever. Here we have the thermometer going up since the fever seen in typhoidal fever generally increases over the course of the day. The roses over here remind us of the rose spots seen in typhoid fever. And again, we have this contaminated cup since transmission is through contaminated drinking water and food, especially seen in travelers, which is why this pathogen over here has the suitcase. We see various features of typhoid fever, including the abdominal pain, increasing fever, and bloody diarrhea, which may be seen. But again, not usually. But one thing we are making note of over here is the large liver as hepatosplenomegaly may actually be seen in typhoid fever. It could actually even, typhoid fever can be a life-threatening condition, and it's important for patients to get treated. For example, with a fluoroquinolone, represented by this flower queen over here. Flower queen, 
vaccine for fluoroquinolone as fluoroquinolone, such as ciprofloxacin, may be used to treat typhoid fever. Transmission of the non-typhoidal type, for example, enteritis, may involve contaminated poultry or eggs, especially raw eggs. Reptiles, such as turtles, may be carriers, although I've never seen this actually tested on exams. And this creature over here reminds me that the non-typhoidal strains, such as enteritis, are phagocytosed by neutrophils and macrophages. This guy over here kind of looks like a macrophage, so I imagine him phagocytosing enteritis. But then what happens is, the pathogen induces a massive inflammatory response, leading to watery diarrhea, abdominal pain, and fever, which are typical of the non-typhoidal strains, such as enteritis. But again, there may be bloody diarrhea, although it's usually watery. And this infection usually self-resolves. And a high yield point about salmonella is that immunocompromised patients, especially those with sickle cell, represented by this sickle, may get osteomyelitis represented by this hanging skeleton over here. They may also get endocarditis, but this is usually not tested on. All right, so in summary, Shigella and Salmonella are both gram-negative rods, whereas Shigella has no flagella, Salmonella does have flagella. Both of them are oxidase-negative and are non-lactose fermenting, and they both involve the pyre patches, specifically the M cells overlying the pyre patches of the GI tract. Shigella produces acute onset fever, abdominal pain, and bloody diarrhea, whereas Salmonella does not generally involve bloody diarrhea, and there are two types, the non-typhoidal type and the typhoidal type. The non-typhoidal type is transmitted through poultry and eggs and maybe even turtles and the pathogenesis involves macrophages and neutrophils whereas the typhoidal type has a VI capsule which prevents phagocytosis of macrophages and neutrophils and SIP transmission is through dirty drinking water and food and is especially seen in travelers and there may even be hepatosplenomegaly. Right, I hope you enjoyed this scene on Shigella and Salmonella. Take care.